everyone welcome back to GK today i am mujhe sana and in this video we'll cover the current affairs before we move ahead let me inform you that these questions are part of our daily 20 mcq series 2022 in the gk today's android application so if you are looking for the text version of these questions and their explanations along with the interactive quiz you may consider joining our daily 20 mcq series in the gk today android application in this course in app you get daily 20 mcqs a fortnightly quiz a monthly revision document and also category wise revision ebooks that are optimized for reading on mobile you are also able to access all archives of questions from january 2020 onwards and let me tell you one more thing if you want the hindi version of this session you can refer to our former channel named as gk today the link has been given in the description box from where you can reach to so without taking much of your time let's get started good morning everyone welcome back to gk today and today we'll be discussing most important mcqs for 18th of january 2022 starting with very first question the man portable anti tank guided missile which was recently flight tested was developed in which country so the defense research and development organization has successfully flight tested the man portable anti tank guided missile and this missile is an indigenously developed low wage missile which has been developed by obviously drdo in association with a private indian defense contractor so it is india's third generation fire and forget anti tank guided missile that has been derived from nag anti tank guided missile okay so correct answer is option number c now few days back we have seen that north korea has recently tested the railway borne missile what is this actually this type of missile is launched from the train itself and it is a kind of ballistic missile so earlier they used to test the hypersonic missiles but now they have used the ballistic one what is the basic difference between ballistic and hypersonic missiles actually the ballistic missiles are known for their strike distance okay while the hypersonic missiles are known for their speed so these missiles flew 800 kilometers and struck a target in the eastern coast of north korea then apart from it recently on 11th of january drdo has test fired the brahmos advanced variant and it is a c to c variant of the brahmos supersonic cruise missile and it was tested from ins visakhapatnam and talking about brahmos it was developed under the joint collaboration of india and russia and it can be launched from air sea and land and the target range of brahmos is nearly 290 kilometers now apart from all these things union minister jitendra singh has launched an artificial intelligence driven startup named as swajal water private limited which has been started by iit alumni for water purification so the company's patented system named as clear voint uses the artificial intelligence to optimize purification system and predict the future breakdowns and also they have developed clean drinking water solutions in the form of water atms which combines internet of things technology with solar energy okay so you can be asked that what is the objective of clear voint which is the artificial intelligence patented system that has been launched recently so the answer would be it is related to water purification now you have to tell me agni p which was in news recently comes under which category of missile for example it is surface to surface or surface to air so please write your answers in the comment section question number 2 parak which was seen in the news recently is a portal associated with which field first of all what does parak stands for it is performance assessment review and analysis of knowledge for holistic development so the national education policy introduced this parak and recently the all india council for technical education launched this particular portal which will conduct assessment of students and faculty members of higher educational institutes and schools so it is related to student learning assessment now apart from it ministry of earth sciences is implementing a scheme named as acros the full form is quite important and the acronym stands for atmospheric climate sciences and services and it caters to aspects of weather and climate services so why this scheme was in news because 
Recently, the Cabinet Committee of Economic Affairs has approved the continuation of scheme from 14th financial cycle to next cycle that is 2021 to 2026 at an estimated cost of 2135 crore rupees. So the question that can be asked from this is across scheme comes under which ministry? Answer would be Ministry of Earth Sciences. Then also there is a scheme from again Ministry of Earth Sciences and the name of that scheme is OSMART. What does it stand for? Ocean Services Modeling Application Resources and Technology. So aim is to provide forecast and services based on the continuous observation of oceans. And do remember that there are seven sub schemes to this umbrella scheme which are implemented by five institutions. Okay. Now apart from all these things, earlier we have seen that Ministry of Labor and Employment has recently released a new series of wage rate index with base year 2016. So it is compiled and maintained by the Labor Bureau and the new series of WRI with base year 2016 will replace the old series with base 1963 to 65. So basically base year is revised to make the economic indicators reflect the correct changes in the economy. Now can you tell me which organization has recently won the Indra Gandhi Peace Prize 2021? Please answer me in the comments. Now question number 3. Gulabo which recently passed away at the one Bihar National Park and Zoo Bhopal is a dash. What is Gulabo? Actually Gulabo was India's oldest sloth bear and recently it died at the age of 40 years at the one Bihar National Park and Zoo in Bhopal. So the female bear was rescued from a street performer in 2006 when she was at the age of 25 years. And the autopsy determined that the failure of internal organs due to old age is the cause of death of this bear. Now apart from it, in the previous lecture we have seen that Assam government has decided to increase the size of Oran National Park to triple of its size. So the state is to add nearly 200 square kilometers to the Oran National Park and it became a tiger reserve as well in 2016. Do remember that National Park and Wildlife Sanctuary are declared under the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 while the Biosphere Reserves are declared under UNESCO Man and Biosphere Reserve Program of 1971. Also one more important thing is earlier what happened is all the national parks, wildlife sanctuaries and other wildlife related subjects were in the state list. We are talking about the Indian constitution but later on with 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act which came into 1976, these subjects moved from the state list to now concurrent list. If you know the basic about constitution, we have 12 schedules in it in which 7th schedule talks about 3 list, state list, center list and concurrent list. So concurrent list is actually a matter of concern for both that is state and center. Okay. Now which are the other 6 national parks in Assam? First is Dihin Patkai, second is Dibru Sakhova, third is Manas, fourth is Kaziranga, fifth is Nameri and the sixth one is Romana and this seventh one is the Orang. So do remember that Assam has total seven national parks. So recently Dihin Patkai has been added as the seventh national park in June 2021 and the Manas and the Kaziranga are the UNESCO World Heritage Sites as well as Tiger Reserve. Okay. So do remember that Assam has now third most national parks in India and which state has the most national parks? It is Madhya Pradesh with total 12 and then at the second place it is Andaman and Nicobar Islands with total 9 national parks. Fine. Now let's see some of the static facts regarding the national parks. Which is the largest national park in India? It is Hemis National Park. It is in Ladakh and the characteristic of this national park is the snow leopards. Then which is the first marine national park in India? It is in Gulf of Kutch in Gujarat. Then the only floating national park of India is everyone knows this Kebul Lamjo National Park. It is in Manipur. Then the oldest national park is Jim Corbett where in Uttarakhand. Then there are some of the national parks which are frequently in use. Let's see some of them. For example, there is Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh, 
सेकेंड इज भीतर कनिका इट लाइज इन ओडिशा देन देर इज बग्जा नेशनल पार्क इट इज इन वेस्ट बेंगाल देन नेक्स्ट इज सरिस्का इट लाइज इन राजस्थान एंड लव यू हैव टू टेल मी इन विच स्टेट नामदफा नेशनल पार्क लाइव प्लीज आंसर मी क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर सेंट्रल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ क्लासिकल तमिल इज लोकेटेड इन विच सिटी सो प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी हैज इनऑपरेटेड द न्यू बिल्डिंग ऑफ द सेंट्रल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ क्लासिकल तमिल इन Perum Bakkam on the outskirts of the Chennai city. So this was formerly known as the Center of Excellence for Classical Tamil, and it is an autonomous organization under the Union Ministry of Education. So it was functioning at the campus of the Central Institute of Indian Languages, Mysore, from two thousand six to two thousand eight. Okay. Now Tamil Nadu was also in news because recently it has notified the regional plan rules. 2021 and the rules are notified for preparing plans for 12 regions that cover nearly 1.36 lakh square kilometer in the state and the state will constitute a regional planning authority as well to prepare land and building use maps over the next 18 months now apart from it also do remember that prime minister narendra modi laid the foundation of 6700 crore rupees renuka ji dam project from himachal pradesh mandi and once completed it is expected to generate nearly 200 million units of energy in a 40 megawatt surface power house so you can be asked that renuka ji dam project is to come up in which indian state answer would be himachal pradesh now can you tell me what is the expiry criteria of a bridge in india actually there is no expiry date for any bridge at all So what happened is Union Ministry of Road Transport and Highways Mr Nitin Gadkari has announced that the center will bring in a policy to know the condition and age of all the bridges across the country since there are no expiry date for the bridges in India and hence there are many accidents and deaths so ministry had prepared the Indian bridge management system to collect information about the bridges of the country okay now you have to tell me What does the acronym REAG stand for? And let me give you a hint. It is related to European Union member states. Question number five: Which ministry initiated a comprehensive review of India's criminal laws? So, Ministry of Home Affairs has initiated the process for a comprehensive review of India's criminal laws. So, Union Home Minister Amit Shah sought suggestions from within the judiciary, including the Chief Justice of India, MPs. and chief ministers for amendments to the indian penal code and the code for criminal procedure so suggestions were invited from the chief justice of high courts administrators of union territories bar councils and law universities okay now apart from it the swachh vidyalay puraskar was instituted by the ministry of education which is formally called as the ministry of human resource development in the year 2016 to recognize the excellence in sanitation and hygiene practiced in schools so swachh vidyalay puraskar 2021 to 22 was launched virtually recently and the sub categories are water sanitation hand washing with soap operation and maintenance then behavior change and capacity building and the newly added category is covid 19 preparedness and response So, if you are asked that which union ministry instituted the Swachh Vidyalaya Puraskar, answer would be Ministry of Education. Then, apart from it, the Consumer Price Index, which is released by the National Statistical Office of Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation with base year 2012, is India's benchmark inflation rate. So, the index measures the changes in the general level of retail prices of selected goods and services. that household purchase for the purpose of consumption and the cpi released for the month of december 2021 by the ministry stood at 5.59% year on year okay now you have to tell me which country has recently won the davis cup title by defeating croatia question number 6 india signed an agreement with which country for implementing two versus two agri market access issues So India's Department of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare and the US Department of Agriculture 
signed an agreement for implementing the two versus two agri market access issues. So the export of Indian mangoes and pomegranates to the US is in accordance with the recent agreement. And India also signed agreements to allow import of cherries, alpha alpha hay, US pork and pork products to India. So answer would be USA. Now USA was also in news because two, three months back it has issued the first passport with an X gender option, which marks a milestone in recognizing the rights of people who are not identified as male or female. Then apart from it, Japan has recently signed a historic defense agreement with Australia to ensure a secure and stable Indo-Pacific region. Why? Due to the expansion of China's military and economic influence in the region. So this is Japan's second such agreement and first was done with USA. And this agreement is called as Reciprocal Access Agreement. Okay. Now also USA was in news because of Maya Angelou as she has become the first black woman to appear on the US coin. Okay. Now you have to tell me at least one defense exercise between India and USA. Question number seven, who is the head of the Supreme Court appointed inquiry committee to probe Prime Minister security breach? So the Supreme Court appointed an inquiry committee under its former judge, Justice Indu Malhotra to probe the security breach during Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Punjab. And this committee will also include the Registrar General of Punjab and Haryana Court, then the Director General of National Investigation Agency or an officer nominated by him and ADGP Security of Punjab Police and the committee will look into the reasons for security breach and suggest safeguards which are necessary for the security of the Prime Minister and the constitutional functionaries. Now apart from it, India's leading education tech firms or the companies have come together to form a consortium named as India ED Tech Consortium or you can say IEC. So this would form and adhere to a code of conduct. So education technology startups like Baiju's, Career360, Unacademy, etc. have formed this consortium. Now apart from it, the Supreme Court of India has expanded the meaning of vulnerable witnesses to include the sexual assault victims and those with mental illness and people with speech or hearing impairment among others. So the Supreme Court also directed all the high courts to notify a vulnerable witness deposition center scheme within a period of two months. So if you are asked that which institution directed all the high courts to notify the vulnerable witness deposition center scheme, answer would be Supreme Court of India. Question number eight. Kumbalangi, India's first ever sanitary napkin free village is located in which state? So this became the first ever sanitary napkin free village in the country and it is located in the Arnakulam district of Kerala. Please let me know if anyone is from here. Evil Kai campaign being implemented in this constituency under which menstrual cups are distributed to women who are aged 18 and above. Also to remember that this was declared a model village by the Kerala governor and also it holds the title of India's first model tourist village. Now apart from it, a constitution literacy campaign named as The Citizen is being organized in the district of Kollam in the state of Kerala. So Kollam district panchayat, district planning committee and the Kerala institute of local administration would jointly educate over 7 lakh families on the basic principles of Indian constitution. And the aim of this initiative is to declare Kolam a totally constitution literate district on 14th of August midnight. Now Kerala was also in news because Niti Ayog has recently launched its fourth health index in which Kerala has emerged as the top performer with respect to overall health performance among the larger states. On the other hand, UP has been ranked last. So the top five were Kerala, then Tamil Nadu, after that Telangana, then Andhra Pradesh and then Maharashtra. And the bottom three were UP, Bihar and Madhya Pradesh. 
नो कैन यू टेल मी मुख्यमंत्री कन्या सुमंगला स्कीम बिलोंग टू विच पर्टिकुलर स्टेट और यूनियन टेरिटरी क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन विच कंट्री हैज डेवलप्ड टी यू वन सिक्सटी एम वाइट स्वैन बॉम्बर सो रशिया हैज डेवलप्ड एंड अनवील्ड इट्स टी यू वन सिक्सटी एम स्ट्रेटेजिक बॉम्बर ऑल्सो नोन एज वाइट स्वैन एंड रिसेंटली द डेब्यू फ्लाइट ऑफ द बॉम्बर वॉज कंडक्टेड सक्सेसफुली एंड एज पर द रशियन मिलिट्री सोर्सेज द न्यूली बिल्ड स्ट्रेटेजिक मिसाइल कैरिंग बॉम्बर हैज एट्टी परसेंट ऑफ इट्स इक्विपमेंट अपग्रेडेड एंड इट इज केबल टू स्ट्राइक एनिमी टारगेट्स इन रिमोट एरियाज विथ न्यूक्लियर एंड कन्वेंशनल वॉर वेपन्स नो अपार्ट फ्रॉम इट रिसेंटली ऑन टेंथ ऑफ जनवरी यू एस एंड रशियन ऑफिशियल्स मेट इन जेनेवा एंड दे डिस्कस्ड ऑन सेवरल इशूज इंक्लूडिंग द टेंशन अबाउट यूक्रेन एक्चुअली यू एस ए एंड अदर वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज आर अंडर द फेयर ऑफ रशियन इन्वेजन ऑफ यूक्रेन दैट्स वाई दिस मीटिंग टू प्लेस नो अपार्ट फ्रॉम इट ऑल्सो वी हैव सीन दैट प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी and russian president vladimir putin held the 21st india russia annual summit recently to discuss the global and the regional issues so what were these issues basically countries agreed to extend the military technical cooperation by another 10 years and currently the indigenous production under this cooperation includes the t90 tanks mig 29k aircraft su30 mki then upgrade of mig and supply of multi rocket barrel launcher smirch and also both india and russia are currently developing fifth generation fighter aircraft and multi role transport aircraft then also reserve bank of india and bank of russia signed a pact to respond to the cyber attacks then also leaders agreed that both the countries share common perspectives on the situation in afghanistan and they agreed to implement a bilateral road map created to act upon afghanistan and last but not least the intergovernmental commission on military and military technical cooperation was also held and this commission was established in 2000 fine now coming to last question which type of led uses an organic compound as film which emits light in response to an electric current so this is organic light emitting diode which is a type of led in which emissive electroluminescent layer is a film of organic compound that emits light in response to an electric current and this is a competitive alternative to liquid crystal displays that is lcds so recently team of researchers from korea have demonstrated a printing technique which produces fully 3d printed flexible oled displays okay now apart from it the senior scientist s somnath who is presently the director of vikram sarabhai space center tiruvanathpuram has been appointed as the chairman of indian space research organization and he has succeeded mr k sivan and he would be now the fourth person from kerala to occupy the isro's topmost position now let us start with today's quiz Here on the slide you can see five questions which have been taken from the past two three days current affairs. Pause the video and try to solve each of these questions. And at the end of the lecture, do not forget to share your scores in the comment section. So please be honest and do not cheat with yourself. So that's it for today. I hope you have liked the session. These were the important news and events from today, and we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, and please do not forget to subscribe to GK Today. With this, me Nuzat Sana signing off.